We discussed what a STEM curriculum is and have seen the power of engineering simulation. ANSYS Discovery Day is a STEM program that uses engineering simulations to help you better understand the physics and retain more of what you learn. This is done through what we call contextual learning and hands-on learning. Contextual learning means that you can actually see what is being explained, even things that are not visible in real life, so that you can better focus on the content. Hands-on learning implies that you will learn how to perform simulations and use them as a virtual lab to explore different physics. So now, please fasten your seatbelt and thank you for choosing to fly with ANSYS today. In this course, we will introduce basic elements of aerodynamics and discuss their importance. Then we will explore the concept of lift through videos, doing experiments and performing simulations. Next, we will learn about drag using a similar approach. Last, you will put what you've learned into practice with a final design challenge using simulations. Now, let's explore some details about airplanes. This is the Wright Brothers Flyer. You may have seen it before. It was uh, the very first airplane to make a successful flight in the human history. It was very hard to control. It was made of wood and fabric and had a strange shape compared to what we see nowadays. The Wright brothers did a lot of scientific research to build it and make it fly. That was the beginning of the aviation era. Several years later, numerous airplanes models were built in different countries, each one with its own unique shape. This one is a Sopwit Camel. It looks like a modern version of the flyer and presents some characteristics that we can still see in small airplanes. For example, a single propeller in front, landing gears, and a fuselage for the pilot to sit in. This was a biplane, meaning that it had two wings. And you can see that the wings were almost completely flat. This is because at the time there was a very little knowledge of aerodynamics. In the same period, there was another famous airplane flying up in the air, the Fokker DR1, piloted by the Red Baron who was the ace of his period. This airplane had three wings, a bird-like tail, and was very maneuverable. However, the airplane was not very fast. This is because the knowledge of aerodynamics was still incomplete. Even if a larger number of wings would produce more lift and keep the airplane in the air, it will also add more drag and slow the airplane down. I've been talking about this term, aerodynamics, but what does it really mean? Aerodynamics is the study of air and its behavior. In particular, it studies how air moves and how it interacts with solid objects. Thanks to the extensive research in aerodynamics, and on the material properties, nowadays we can see gigantic machines flying up in the air. They can comfortably transport hundreds of passengers across the globe and they have completely different shapes to the one we saw earlier. Modern day aircrafts have only one set of wings that have a, a very specific profile. The entire airplane shape is very smooth. All of this to improve the performance during flight. Let's now introduce some basic aerodynamics concepts. We can start with three quantities. The first is pressure. This is the measure of how much something pushes on something else. To better remember this, we can connect pressure with the keyword 
push. If we push our ends onto each other, we can feel the pressure increase. Another example is a soccer ball. When we inflate the ball, the pressure of the air inside pushes the ball outward and stretches it. Next, we can introduce the velocity or speed. This, as you may know, is the measure of how much space something covers per unit of time. If we have a race between a bulldozer, a motorcycle and a rocket, we can see that they cover different distances in the same amount of time. The rocket, um, well, it's already down the street there. This means that they go at different velocities. The slowest is the bulldozer and the rocket is the fastest. The last concept is viscosity. This is the measure of how much a fluid resists to deformation. Think about moving your hand in air and in a glass with honey. Honey will be pretty sticky and also you will feel more resistance. To remember this, we can connect viscosity to the keywords stickiness and resistance. If we drop four spheres in fluids with different viscosities, we can see that as the viscosity increases, the sphere will fall more slowly because of the higher resistance of the fluid. Now, we can introduce some additional relevant terms. The wing is what keeps the airplane in the air, like the wings of birds. If we cut the wing, we get a shape called an airfoil. This shape is different from airplane to airplane. However, it's optimized to reduce resistance and keep the airplane up in the air. If we focus on the airfoil, we can define the direction of motion of the airplane. And if we rotate the airfoil, we can define the angle of attack. That is the angle between the direction of the motion and the line that connects front and back of the airfoil. The items we just discussed will be fundamental to exploring how airplanes stay up in the air and the forces acting on them.